Good morning, everybody. There was lots of birds activities here in the last few minutes. The numbers have thinned out a little now. So much life, all the beings come to life. As the light rises, there are probably some beings that go to, to sleep and they draw away some predators or most of things just open up, even the flowers. These have to open up yet. They're locked in. The light is here, the warmth is here. In the morning we open up to life. And there's an interesting call in the first reading today. It's uh, really, it's matched with uh, Psalm 100, which also has that same spirit. Come into the Lord's presence with songs of joy. Come, move, shake a leg. Come into the Lord's presence with songs of joy. Come to the party. Come. Get up. Isn't that interesting language? And it speaks to us where we are. Maybe we're a little lethargic. We need encouragement, we need an invitation. Come. There's another word that's used in an interesting way, I think, if we think about biblical sacrifice. We might think of Abraham and Isaac, we might think of the temple and all the, the worship. We might think of Jethro, not Jethro, uh, what was his name? Uh, Jephthah and his daughter. We might think of things like that that also have a, need, a, a bit of sadness to them. There's another style, the word, the word is used in another context here. And it is spiritual sacrifice. And it's a call to everybody to offer spiritual sacrifices. All these disciples have been, have come to new life. They've woken up to new life. You hear all the birds. These are crows. There's a purple heron. No, that's a white one. A different one. It's funny how it was flying there. I didn't look close enough. Come into the Lord's presence with songs of joy. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. 
And here we have the intercession of Peter. Bring spiritual sacrifices. What's a spiritual sacrifice? Well, it's not a bloody sacrifice like at the temple. It's a spiritual sacrifice. And really, all the bloody sacrifices had spiritual sacrifice inside them because there were decisions of the will of self-giving that had a lot of self-denial. Maybe all the bloody sacrifice actually don't count much without the spiritual sacrifice. It would be very external to the person. But we to think of that case that we know very well from our Christmas story and the offering of Jesus in the temple. And they gave two turtle doves because they were poor. So that was a financial sacrifice to sacrifice a bull, an animal. It was a very physical way of doing it in order to, to make a statement to God. I'm giving you this thing that's precious for me. And particularly the case of Isaac, Abraham and Isaac, or the promise Jephthah made to God that he would... It's like a very different world. We shouldn't even go there right now in this conversation. It needs more time. But uh, all of them include the handing over of something personal in an irretrievable way to God. And a spiritual sacrifice then is that interior obedience, that interior gift. I wonder if we do much of that intentionally. Maybe it happens against our will. When we have to give up something and then because of our docility we accept this difficult situation. And that's a genuine spiritual sacrifice. But to bring spiritual sacrifices to God is almost more proactive. special acts of kindness in the family where I forego my own will. And I offer up to God. Somebody wants to play, I'm very tired. And the child wants to play and you play. And you say, Lord, this one's for you. This one's for the child, this one's for you. This is my prayer to you now. This is my gift to you. That's living in a communion with God. And it's mobilizing the daily experiences, the difficulties, interiorly offering them up as a prayer. And the person that's on that road is on a high road. It's on a real broad, wide open path of communion with God. Look around the world and you see certain problems and to offer up the things of today, the difficulties of today. And it's the exact opposite end of the spectrum to one who would be complaining. So a situation, there's a downturn, a negative reality. And you say to God, here, I offer this to you. I make up for this. I will do some reparation. I want to show you love. Even if your law is disregarded. If somebody hasn't been kind, and you return goodness. A little wink to heaven and say, Lord, this is for you. These are real spiritual sacrifices. And they're very powerful because they're more than just words, I love you. 
they're situations that are really difficult for us. And they become very, very solid prayer, very authentic. Very authentic. If you allow me here, I'm just going to park the camera for a moment. I want to set up that extra filming opportunity for those good guys in California so they can have more footage. I think this is a good place to do because there'll be a lot of wildlife here. It's kind of sheltered vegetation-wise. When you see the self-concept of the people there, the text goes on to say you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own, so that you may announce the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Well, what an amazing thing, amazing under self-understanding as a people, a whole community. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of his own. This language is first applied to, to God's chosen people, but then all those who are grafted into the vine participate in that understanding, purified, sins forgiven, living for God, as aliens and sojourners in the world being misunderstood by the Gentiles. Very interesting. How do we see ourselves? How do we understand ourselves? When we see so many so much depression in the world today. This is a very, very counter attitude. It's the opposite end of the spectrum. So many sad stories coming from families around the world, especially the first world where all the resources are available. And people are very, very sad. Imagine understanding yourself in that way. A member of a holy people, a chosen people. In communion with God, walking together, helping each other. No matter what the difficulties are, there is a deep source of life, of conviction, of certainty, of fulfillment of purpose 
that transcends every type of situation. And also you can tie into that rejoicing with the angels and saints in heaven in God's presence. And to live at that level through all the difficulties of life, the difficulties of marriage, of family, of work, of health, economy, financial difficulties, frustrations of different kinds. And so we're going through a certain mill of challenges going upstream, difficult path, the narrow path, the thorny path, but deep down inside, completely united with God. And bringing those spiritual sacrifices that also in themselves are pretty physical because they're they're for real, they cause us a lot of difficulty. And this is actually the path of the great saints and the great mystics. And to discover this path is really to enter into light, into the true light, into the true life. The dawn has come, the sun has risen. And a lot of flowering of the potential of humanity comes to great maturity. And there's a, a lot of nectar for God's creatures to make incredible eternal honey. A lot of fruit is born. Amazing transformation happens. In a certain sense, a lot of people obviously don't see that today. And maybe if I don't see that, if I have a struggle with that way of seeing the world, then maybe we could cry out like Bartimaeus, Lord, have mercy on me. Restore my sight. He was blind in Jericho. And actually we're looking right across to Bethsaida where in chapter eight of Mark's gospel, Jesus heals a blind man it's step by step. And now almost at the end of the journey in Jericho, because that's Mark's gospel. It's a, after the proclamation in Galilee, it's a journey to Jerusalem, one journey, culminating in the Passion. And we're at the end of chapter 10, so we have all these chapters of that journey. And now we have bookending this trip. We have a blind man being immediately cured, not step by step like here in Bethsaida, across from us, but completely healed. Sometimes the healing of our sight for the spiritual life takes time. We open our eyes slowly. We discover that the spiritual life is really a whole other level. And we can live with new, new zest for life. Live on another plane. Like, you can visit cancer patients that are filled with joy have extraordinarily deep peace in their hearts because they're connected to another level. They're connected to the divine level and it's real. They're, if you want to say it like that, they're totally consecrated to God living in this world. The kingdom of God is in this world, but not of this world. It operates in different principles. And it's not something abstruse and something intangible that you can't get to. It's really there. Maybe a lot of the kids from the West who went out to the East to look for spirituality, and a lot of people are still doing that today, they don't realize the extraordinary gift that's available of communion with God through this simple path.
and also the ultimate purpose of all we do. This world isn't just to have a certain level of prosperity, and that's it. A person did well. They owned those properties, they were successful, they were well seen. No, our purpose is to, to fly, not to crawl on the earth, to fly to the spiritual realms. That true bridge of all creation, like in the very beginning, Adam and Eve were in communion with God, and the whole of creation was culminating through them. This is the original vocation of the human being. This is the great nostalgia in our hearts. Obviously, we have to drink that spiritual milk that Peter talks about, that good nourishment for our soul. And maybe this little stroll and chat in the morning is a help for that because it's contact with the scriptures very good healthy food for the soul i think i have gone overboard with time this morning forgive me so it's called a day and we're here now a little bit further south today not too much i had a lead call last night with somebody in mexico that needed to coordinate some things so we need to get out here for the sunrise one of these days and get a little further afield. At least that's in my heart. People, see you later, alligators. God bless you. In the midst of a glorious morning here. See you later at the latest in heaven. What happened here? You're still live, I thought I finished. Oh, there we go. Sorry about this, guys. I think I turned you around and I thought I had you closed down. God bless you.